everybody. Welcome to the show. You know where you are, the nine at nine with me, Tigo. And you know, I love bringing experts. We talk about it all the time because I want them to share their trailblazing story. And over the years, if you've listened to me, you know, I started my first business when I was 10. And in 48 years, I may have gathered a lot of clutter. So who do I bring in? The clutter expert. Now you may be saying, now what is a clutter expert? You're about to find out because I know you got clutter too. So sit right there. We'll be right back. Expert Talk is sponsored by Pod Nation TV, the podcast to broadcast network. Yep, 48 years of clutter. We're going to clean it up in nine minutes, maybe seven and a half right about now. I got to say, hey, Mel, are you out there? Mel Mason is here today. What's going on, t What's happening? Mel Mason, the clutter expert. Now, I'm assuming that means that you help us get rid of clutter and not bring a truckload of clutter to our house. Yes, absolutely. I'm all about clearing the clutter from the inside out. But here's the secret. You hear that word clutter? First thing you think about probably is piles accumulating, drawers overflowing, a garage you can't park your car in. Oh, yeah. Just one external manifestation of clutter. That's just one. There's many more. Okay, but you're saying that you got to get rid of the clutter inside too? Well, here's the secret. There's a little law in operation in the universe. Like, you know, the law of gravity. We can't really argue with it, right? Throw a pen in the air, it's going to fall. Well, there's another law in operation in the universe called the principle of correspondence, which means simply that the outside is only a mirror of the inside. You know, when you're pointing the finger at someone else, you got those four fingers pointing back at you. Well, it's the same thing. The outside (laughs) always mirrors the inside. Okay. Outside always mirrors the inside. I have met people that are like polished as a shiny penny on the outside. And then I have gone to their home or or just met them outside of work. And literally it felt like yin and gang. They were entirely, the car's a mess. The house is a mess. They can't find the thing thing. But then when you start talking about work, there's that shiny penny. So does it really matter if you're cluttered inside? Well, we're all cluttered inside. No human gets out of life unscathed. I mean, literally just coming out of the birth canal into this world is traumatic. And all clutter is, is simply unprocessed trauma, resentments, fears, limiting beliefs, and judgments, and all that stuff that we accumulate. We accumulate all this stuff on the inside. And because the outside's a mirror of the inside, it starts showing up in our outside environment and on our body so that we get the indication that something's going on. So physical clutter shows up, excess weight, toxic relationships, mounting debt, addiction, you know, all of those things start to show up, but they're all external manifestations of the same internal condition that we all have being human. Wow. Okay. So I've got two questions for you. The first one is, I know a lot of people felt like they didn't have that much clutter before COVID hit. And now we're knocking on the door of going into year three of this madness. So what do you tell people that felt I was fine before COVID? Now my entire life feels like one big ball of messed up yawn that a kitten has been playing with for hours. What do you tell them? Well, ultimately, because the outside is only a mirror of the inside, when clutter begins to accumulate, it accumulates simply for this fact only. We're unwilling to look at it and make a decision about it. We become unwilling to look at it. And because the outside only mirrors the inside, that unwillingness to look at what's going on outside of you is just reflecting the fact that you're unwilling to be present for your own experience and make the space in your life for yourself. That's all it means. It's that simple. So somebody's watching right now and they're going, yeah, yeah, Mel, I hear you. I hear you. But you don't have clutter. You've never had problems in your life. I mean, you you were a kickboxer. You're a boxer. You're an entrepreneur. You're an author. What problems do you have? How do you talk to me about my clutter when your life is perfect? 
Oh, I wish it was perfect, but it didn't start that way either. I was the cluttered, messy kid. You could not walk in my room. The entire floor was covered, but it doesn't, it wasn't just with stuff. I was fine living in filth because I was, I was full of shame. And I didn't realize then that the outside is a mirror of the inside because at that point in my life, I was littered with clutter on the inside. I had experienced so much trauma. My parents separated when I was four. I had three different sexual traumas at the age of eight from three different perpetrators. And then at the age of 15 years old, I lost my older brother to suicide. Now, I didn't just lose him to suicide. I was living with him and I found him. And I inherited all of his belongings in the same moment. So that 15-year-old cluttered mess had to then go through all of her brother's stuff and figure out what I was going to keep and what I was going to let go of. And that just sent me on a downward spiral. And I pretty much was about to get off the planet. I did not want to be here anymore. Nobody expected me to make it to see my 18th birthday alive. And I was introduced to yoga and mindfulness when I had to go live in a treatment center for adolescents for a year and a half of my life. And as a result, that cluttered, messy kid who was fine living in filth, all of a sudden, within a year of being willing to be present for my own experience and all of that inner clutter, went from that messy kid to someone who could no longer tolerate disorder in my life. And I had to have everything in its place. I didn't let go of all my mm. attachments at once, but everything had to be in its place. The letting go, that takes time. But that need to have order happened within a year. Wow. Okay. So I've got to ask you because, you know, I'm being nosy. That's what I did. And I'm out on Facebook and, and up comes this post <laughs> from my buddy Mel. And it says, in the best shape of my life. And I went, okay, that's Mel on the right. But who's that person on the left? Right? I don't recognize that person on the left either. That was some really dark times. I was, I was literally, that's 2012. So that was five years in one more year. And I was ready to commit suicide. I was in a very toxic relationship, ready to commit suicide in 2013. And I had another wow. turning point in my life after that. But yeah, that was a year from the point that I was about ready to take my life again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now you're, 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 you know, a best-selling author. You've got five a great time right? best-selling five author, time sister. Five best -selling time. Author. Okay. So tell me, tell me, tell me about your latest book. We're going to throw the website up there so everybody can go get it. Tell me. Okay. So my book is Freedom from Clutter, the guaranteed foolproof step-by-step -step process to remove the stuff that's weighing you down. And it's not just the physical stuff. You can get that at freedomfromclutter.com or .net or whatever it is. I forget it was you guys are putting Tigo direct. That's right. You got that centralized hub, which I love. It keeps it super simple. Um, so that's my book. And then I've contributed to a bunch of other books that have become bestsellers. So I love it. I went out and I looked at your website and I said, is that an eagle? Was she, was that an eagle? What was that? You got your arm out. I'm like, okay, it was photoshopped. It can't be real. Did you really have this bird on your body? It's called the Harris Hawk. I, there's a company uh -huh. called Sky Falconry. They're very dear friends of mine in Alpine, California. Huge shout out to them. If you're in California, you must go check them out. But if you've ever wanted to fly a bird of prey, you can do it as a group or you can do it as a private walk. And I happened to do it as a group before and that's how I met them. And then I went and did a private walk recently by myself and just hung out with them. And I got to fly um a harris hawk and then i forget the name of the other bird i forget off the top of my head right now but it was it was in the same it was a falcon it was in the same family as the peregrine falcon not as fast as the peregrine falcon but got to watch it dive and do i have some amazing footage amazing footage i can't believe the minute it, we got the one minute warning but i gotta ask you you're we're on the nine at nine and your favorite number is nine for real for real, it means the connection of the human with the divine. Nine is the bomb. That's my Mel, favorite number. Are... And the fact that this is nine at nine, I right? love it. Well, you are the best. I hope you'll come back again. You guys go check out her book. I'm going to get the clutter out of my life because now I have my buddy Mel. You are fantastic. You spot you guys. Hey, Mel, thank you so much for being on the show. I hope you'll come back again. And for you guys watching the show, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you'll come back next time. And as always, I'm Tigo. I'll talk to you next time. Really, Alan, we were this close.